And so people are willing to pay a factor of three in performance. So that's why you want performance, okay? Because you can use it to pay for these other things that you want, okay? And that's why in some sense it's on the bottom of the heap, okay? Because it's the universal thing that everybody is, that, that you quantify. Do you want to spend a factor of two on this or spend a factor of three on security, et cetera, okay? And in addition, the lessons generalize to other resource measures, like communication, like memory, and so forth. And the last reason we study algorithms performance is it's tons of fun, okay? You know, speed is always fun, right? Like, why do people, you know, drive fast cars, race, race horses, you know, you know, whatever, okay? You know, rockets, et cetera. Why do we do that? Because speed is fun, okay? Ski, who likes to ski? I love to ski, okay? I like going fast on those skis, okay? It's fun. Okay, hockey, fast sports, right? Okay, we all like the fast sports, okay? Not all of us. I mean, some people say, ah, he's not talking to me. Okay, so let's move on. So that's sort of a little bit of a, a notion as to why we study this, is that it does in some sense form a common basis for all these other things we care about. And so we want to understand how can we generate money for ourselves in computation. Okay, so we're going to start out with a very simple problem. It's one of the oldest problems that has been studied in algorithms. That's the problem of sorting. Okay, and we're going to actually study this for several lectures. Okay, so we're, we're going to, uh, because sorting contains many algorithmic techniques. So the sorting problem is the following. We have a sequence. A1, A2, up to An of numbers as input. <laughs> and our output is a permutation of those numbers. Okay, a permutation is a rearrangement of the numbers. Okay, every number appears exactly once in the rearrangement, such that, so I sometimes use a dollar sign to mean such that, okay, such that A1 is less than or equal to A2 oop, prime, such that they're monotonically increasing in size. Okay, so take a bunch of numbers, put them in order. Okay. So here's an algorithm to do it. It's called insertion sort. And I'm going to write this algorithm in uh, what we call pseudocode. So it's sort of a programming language, except it's got English in there often. Okay, and it's just a shorthand for writing, uh, be it for being precise. Okay, so this sorts a from one to n. And here's the code for it. This is what we call pseudocode. Okay. And uh, 
If you don't understand the pseudocode, then um, you should ask questions about any of the notations. You'll start to get used to it as we go on. One thing is that in the pseudocode, we use indentation, where in most languages they have some kind of begin and delimiters, like curly braces or something in Java or C, for example. Okay, we just use indentation. The whole idea of the pseudocode is to try to get the algorithms as short as possible while still understanding what the individual steps are. Okay? Um, in practice, there actually have been languages that use indentation as a means of showing uh, the nesting of things. It's generally a bad idea because when you page from one, if things go over one page to another, for example, okay, you can't tell what level of nesting it is. Whereas with, uh, with explicit braces, it's much easier to tell. So there, there are reasons why this is a bad notation okay, if you were writing, uh, if you were doing software engineering. But it's a good one for us because it just keeps things short, makes fewer, uh, fewer things to write down. So um, this is insertion sort. Let's try to figure out a little bit what this does. Okay, so um, so it uh, it basically takes an array A and um, at any point the thing to understand is so we're going to we're setting basically we're running the outer loop from J is two to N. And the inner loop that starts at, um, uh, at j minus 1 and then goes down until it's, uh, until it's uh, 0. OK? So basically, so if we look at any point in the algorithm, we essentially are looking at some element here, j, a of j, the jth element. OK? And what we do is essentially is we pull a value out here that we call the key. Okay. And at this point, the important thing to understand is, and we'll talk more about this in recitation on Friday, is that there is an invariant that's being maintained by this loop each time through. And the invariant is that this part of the array is sorted. And the goal each time through the loop is to increase, is to increase is to add one to the length of the things that are sorted. And the way we do that is we pull out the key, and then we just copy values up like this. We keep copying up, OK, until we find the place where this key goes, and then we insert it in that place. And that's why it's called insertion sort. Okay, So we just sort of move the things, copy the things up until we find where it goes. And then we put it into place. And then we, now we have that from A from 1 to J is sorted, and now we can work on J plus 1. Okay? So let's give an example of that. So imagine we're doing 8, 2, 4, 9, 3, 6. So we start out with 2, J equals 2. and we figure out that we want to insert it there. So now we have 2, 8, 4, 9, 3, 6. Okay. Then we look at the 4, and we say, oh, well, that goes over here. So we get 2, 4, 8, 9, 3, 6. 